So we're going to start off with uh, one of the most amazing people I've ever met in my life. Ms. Andrew Hedden is going to talk to us about what your sales team needs to get the results that you're looking for. Andrew. Thank you, Terry. <laughs> Believe everything you said about the session, disregard that last little part. Uh, but it is good to be up here again chatting with you. And I do want to talk about the sales team. So raise your hand if you are the salesperson inside of your company, if you are a portion of sales, a part of sales. Okay. Okay, more hands are going up, the more confident everyone's getting. Okay, okay, so, and, and many of you too may be the owner and also the sales rep, right? Who is that? Who's the owner and sales rep? Okay, actually not as many as I was expecting. Okay, awesome, perfect. Well, I wanna talk through really what it needs to look like to ensure that your sales team succeeds. So here is my information. Also, link up with me on LinkedIn. I like to make it easy. The photo is exactly the same. I would urge all of you to use your same photo on LinkedIn as you use inside of presentations or as you use when you're going to see clients. It makes it really easy for everyone to visually pair up and find you. Um, so pair up with me on LinkedIn and let's connect. All right. So. What I want to do is really dig into these three pieces. So why is it that your sales team may fail? What type of role should your sales team be in charge of? And what does it mean to be the sales role inside of an organization? And then last but not least, how do you empower your sales team? How do you make sure that your sales reps, whether it's you, these are things you need to be asking for inside your companies, or if you, if you are in charge of doing the empowerment, if you're not the salesperson, what are some things that you can do to ensure that you're getting what you need to out of your sales team, right? Many of us have amazing sales goals. Terry just spoke to you about how to make sure you've got the right numbers in your business. What does that look like for you? Now it's about understanding how to make sure that your sales team can live up to those expectations. And that's a team sport. So your salesperson is going to be responsible for a portion of that. You as the business owner are responsible for a portion of that. And then other departments departments inside of your organization are responsible too for propping up your sales team. So I want to talk about that with you and, and dig in a little bit. So these are really what I would consider the, the high level categories of why a sales team or a sales team member can fail. So poor lead generation, and I'm going to talk about that. So they either don't have the leads that they need to succeed Maybe there's a lack of knowledge. So maybe you're new to the industry and you're just starting out and you're in a sales role, but you need to learn what you need to, to do. And then you also need to learn what you're selling. There's a lot of knowledge gaps that often can happen. Confidence. With knowledge comes confidence. Without one, it's really hard to have the other. And, and if you are confident without the knowledge, it's very thin layer of confidence before people start to break into that and understand you don't really know what you're talking about. Then when it comes into the next pieces, so product cost. This does have a lot to do with how successful sales team members can be. Are your products positioned properly? Are you selling the right things? Is your portfolio in a place to where you can empower that salesperson to succeed? We'll talk a little bit about that as well. Follow-up and assumptions. So these are things that more so fall on the salesperson themselves. Once they have all the other bits and pieces checked off, they've got all of that situated, then that falls on the salesperson to really follow through with. So poor lead generation. How do you feel about the lead gen? So those of you that are sales, are you getting the leads that you need to grow and hit the goals that the organization has set up for you? Raise your hand. Who feels awesome about their lead gen? Okay, cool. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, some of you I know you do, but um, but <laughs> that doesn't count. Um, so so I appreciate it though. Um, but so so that's what I want to talk about. So I want to talk about really what it looks like to get good lead generation. So this is the first step making sure that you've got the leads that you need. So Terry did the little exercise, and again, it's a one-on-one -on -one exercise. This is, this is easy math, but it's often overlooked. Many times we go, okay, great, we wanna, we wanna grow, and that's all we're thinking about, growth, growth, growth. But reverse engineering into that growth is what it's all about. Designing that plan for growth is what it's all about. So that's a good first step to get those numbers identified. Now it's a matter of going, okay, well, how do we fill that funnel for these reps? What does that look like? And this is something that will really suffocate a rep when they don't have enough leads coming their way. 
the goal of, and I don't know how many of you um, have been to one of the shows that was a few months ago, but this is a quote that's floating around and continues to float around, and I see it probably being out there for the next couple of years. Um, but Gary Vaynerchuk was at the IT by Design event a few months ago, and if you were there, you probably saw him speak. One of the quotes that's floating around that I actually am a big fan of is that sales is really poor marketing. And it was one of the first times I follow a lot of different things that he and many other entrepreneurs do, but that was one of the first times I heard him say it in that way. And I think it's interesting. So marketing's job is to generate leads for sales. Sales' job is to close a lead that marketing generates. So if nothing happens before the salesperson has to do their job, right, close business, they obviously are turning into more than just a salesperson. Now they're actually having to create the awareness. They're having to do all the marketing too and close. So if, if that is, a, is not setting them up for success with lead generation, you all of a sudden have turned them into a marketer also. So the goal is, is that marketing generates the leads to tee up for the sales team, the sales team closes them. So when there's not enough leads, this will really hurt your sales team and then it also takes their time away from doing what they're supposed to be doing, which is closing business. And any really good salesperson, if you've been in an organization where this is a scenario where you, you have a drought of leads, there's nothing coming in, now your time is spent doing so many other things outside of the realm of what you were brought on to do. You're a good closer, you're good at building relationships, you're good at communicating, now you're having to learn all these other things because marketing is not teeing up any leads for you. So this is something that can really, really affect your, your sales team. Now, lack of knowledge. Confidence is everything in sales. Think about the way that you purchase, think about the places that you go, think about the brands that you believe in, and particularly in tech. So in our world, if you are not confident, and if you're not a confident salesperson, or if you're the engineer trying to be the salesperson, but you don't really have a salesperson internally, you need a salesperson that can actually go in and sell the services that you provide. Not oversell, sell the services that you provide. In order for them to do that, they need to be knowledgeable. So it's important that you tee them up with the knowledge that they need and check in. Many of you are broadening your portfolios. There is a vendor popping up every day with something new, and I know very well that they're trying to get your mind share, and they're trying to get in front of you, and they want you to sell what they have to offer. Being a salesperson in our space can be tough. You've gotta know about every product that's in that portfolio. You've gotta understand how to leverage your resources. So even if your sales team maybe doesn't know all the bits and pieces, leverage your resources from vendors or leverage resources from, from other places like um, sales training portals that vendors have for you or maybe you've got internal sales training. But this knowledge piece is extremely important so that you know when someone is going out and selling your company and selling your services, they are showing up confident on the front end and they can actually follow through with the close. There's nothing worse than sitting across from someone who's trying to sell you something and you know that they're not, one, knowledgeable about it and two, confident about what they're actually offering you. The likelihood of you believing in what they're selling to you is very slim, right? So I would encourage all of you as business owners, sit across from your sales team. If you are the salesperson, have a real conversation with yourself. Are you knowledgeable enough? Do you know what you need to know? Are you confident enough? Um, but if you have a sales team, sit with them. Understand what your pitch looks like. Listen to it. Understand how they're coming across. Go shadow one of their one of their you know on sites. Make sure that you have a good feel and that they are really confident about how they're showing up because this can absolutely kill deals and sometimes prior to even getting on prem. So when it comes to the confidence piece, again they're tied in. Knowledge and confidence are are almost one and the same. They're cousins. They're very close. And and the deal with confidence is it's a it's a Tricky, it's, it's tricky, right? Being confident and being cocky, understanding what, what you know, um, and being able to convey your services and your value is so important on the upfront sales side of the house. So first you've gotta understand your value, right? You've gotta understand what it is that you are selling, obviously from a services perspective, but the value of your business. What are your differentiators? How do you compare to competitors or someone else that might have been in their office offering them another you know, stack right before you? So having confidence in not only obviously yourself as a salesperson, the business that you work for, right? If you're a salesperson and you're not the owner and maybe you don't have confidence in what you're selling, that's a separate issue. 
right? So you've got personal confidence in who you are. Can you show up and talk to someone? Can you sit in a room and feel good about what you're saying? Can you close a deal? But then you also have confidence in the product. And that comes from the couple slides before that I shared. So if you're one of the sales reps that don't have confidence in the product, that lends itself to a great conversation internally to understand what maybe you, you don't know. So maybe you're missing some things that would help you get to that point. And maybe there's holes in the business that you can help to fill. So having these conversations is huge when it comes to understanding how to, to be confident. Now, the follow-up piece. So when you're in a sales role, it's about building relationships. When you're building relationships, just like in life, the consistency of you showing up, the consistency of you being trustworthy, the consistency of you being likable in some cases or knowledgeable in some cases, that should come across and it should be consistent as long as the relationship lives, right? The relationships that fail are the ones that are false, right? You weren't as smart as you said you were. You didn't actually have the services that you said you did. Those are what makes the deterioration of a relationship happen, no matter what type of relationship it is. Now, the goal here is that sales reps that don't follow up, they lose credibility. You stop trusting on the other side of that communication that they're gonna be there when you need them. So when you've got a sales motion on the upfront of your business, this is the first feel of what your services are gonna be like. So these are not mutually exclusive. So this is how someone feels about how you're gonna take care of them inside the business. So as amazing as your engineers may be, as amazing as the back end of your business may be, if it fails on the upfront, they'll never get there. They'll never come in house. And that's why it's so crucial that you do have a cadence on the front end and that you make sure that the, the process that you have on the front end, you know, sales side of the house is being followed. So if it's not you, it's your sales rep, make sure and check in. Again, I would say at least, you know, quarterly check-ins, if not once a half, to make sure that the processes you put in as an owner are still being followed. I can't tell you how many times, um, even in, in our business, it happens sometimes, right? Particularly in the, the front-end build. We've been around for eight years now, but in year one and two, sometimes you build out processes, and then as you bring in more people, maybe it's not followed exactly the same way as you would have wanted it to, or someone ad-libbed and changed something, but it was there for a reason initially. So check up and, and make sure that, that there is follow-up and follow-through. not changing. Let's see here. We might need to come and redo it, but I'll go on anyways. So, so let me see here. Yeah. It might, it, it's freezing. What was that? Yes, and no, I know. So making assumptions. Thank you, friend. Um, so, so when it comes to assumptions, you know, the biggest thing I wanted to share on, on this portion of a sales kind of mentality is a lot of times there are assumptions made by sales rep, particularly when it comes to what a client needs. So you have to ask the right questions to understand what a client needs. The best way to stay away from assumptions is talking, assessing, listening, and not guessing, not thinking you know, not thinking, oh, I've got another client that's kind of similar to them. They probably need the exact same thing that they need. Or, oh, when people ask questions like this, they really don't have the budget for our type of plan, so I'm going to offer them something less than what I would have normally offered them because I just don't think that they can afford it. So never assume in a sales role. This can really kill deals. There's a lot of, a lot of things that go into the kind of the sales proposal build out process. And many times you can lose great deals because you're assuming that the client doesn't have the dollars that you want them to in order to afford what you have. And you could undercut yourself. So you could end up having a, a deal that they pay for, but it might not be what they need. So don't assume one, that they don't have the budget that you need them to in order to buy your services. And don't assume two, that you have to undercut your value and offer them something less because they may have said that that's what they need. If you assess them, they may not know what they need, right? We show up to the doctor's office and we think we know what just happened to us. Well, we don't. We can look it up, we can search on our own, but the expert tells us what happened, what we need, and what the best next steps are gonna be. That's you in the tech space. So it's your job to assess, it's your job to ask the right questions, and then prescribe what's gonna actually solve the problem, not what you think the person will buy into. 
very, very different. And chances are, too, if they're not going to buy into what you genuinely think is going to solve the problem for them, they're probably not the right client for you. And you're saving yourself from headaches down the road. Make sense? Anyone ever been in a situation like that? Yeah, I see lots of heads nodding. Good. Now, recognizing your role. So these are six things, and I'm going to go into each one of them really quickly together with us. Six things that you can do as a business owner, as a sales leader, as maybe the salesperson yourself, to make sure that you are empowering sales teams to grow. Obtaining goals and setting the right expectations for goals. Now, we went over some of the numbers for your business, right? So those are revenue growth targets for your business. That's where you want your business to grow to. That's the annual goals that you're going to set up for yourself. Now, as a salesperson, again, you may have one salesperson, you may have two salespeople. Now you need to start to create what that individual salesperson's world looks like. And their world is broken up of what the goals of the business are. So for that individual sales rep, now we need to understand in order for us to hit our annual revenue goal, what are the goals of my sales team members need to be? If it's one team member, they've got the whole entire goal, right? And we already know how many leads that they're going to need in order to grow the business based on our averages for our clients, what the lifetime of the client is, and then the close ratios. So we already know what that looks like. Now, if we've got more than one, you can split up the bag. Right? You can split it up and you can better understand how together, maybe you've got one more senior rep, one that's not a senior, you can split it up and make sure that everyone is holding on to a piece of the annual revenue that they need. And then you're, you're working towards these numbers with them. Many, many, many times, these types of conversations, like revenue and goals, are talked about only at the executive level and there's like a number thrown at the sales team. But the plan in place, doesn't really get on paper, doesn't really get talked about, and doesn't get talked about often enough either. This is something that should be a weekly conversation at a minimum. When you're having your pipeline meetings and you're talking about you know, what's going on and who are we going after from an account-based perspective and then who, you know, who are we trying to upsell, cross-sell. These should be conversations that are going on. So work with your teams. Make sure that you set goals that are attainable that they can actually hit because there's no better way to discourage a sales rep than to have something that they actually can't achieve. Stretch goals are great. Don't get me wrong. I love a good stretch goal. But you need to make sure that it is attainable and that the way that you structure their comp to is based on that, that they can actually hit those. So they actually get excited about it and they want to keep moving hard, you know, harder and faster to get those next goals and those next tiers attained. Now, when it comes to price point of products, this is something that you should be assessing too. Maybe on an annual basis, maybe more if you need to, depending on the way that you're working your portfolio and your, your product build outs. But making sure that the way that you have structured your offerings makes sense. That your offerings are packaged properly, that they're priced properly, and then again, obviously that that story around them for them to be sold is good, your team's knowledgeable about them, they can be confident, and they can sell it. And then obviously the most important that you can fulfill what you sold. So pricing is really important. Make sure that you're gaining feedback from your sales teams. Are you hitting any bumps? When you're on the front, you know, we just lost that deal, w what did we hear? What was the deal? W why did we lose it? Make sure you're having feedback loops on lost and won deals. Because there could be something that happened in a one deal because they framed it a certain way, they put a certain promotion in, they did something that might really start to work. So analyze wins and losses because there's a lot to learn from both. But don't be afraid to, to look back at the way you're pricing things and, and make sure that you're doing it properly for your business. Now, when it comes to a sales culture, every individual who's a true salesperson loves a good sales culture. It is all about making sure that the business is growing, making sure that there's incentives in place for it to be the case, making sure that you are analyzing what's going on, that you're trying to set the bar higher, that you're, you're really supporting your team to hit the goals that you've got in place. So culture is really big across the business, um, but particularly in a, a sales team. Now, brand. Now we're teetering into marketing a little bit. So brand is extremely important when it comes to the confidence that that salesperson is going to have. 
you ever worked for a company where the, they didn't have that great of a brand, I grant many of you are owners, but if you've worked for a company that doesn't have that great of a brand, you might be the best salesperson. And that's why they brought you in, because they've been having issues. You're the best salesperson. But the brand, there's not much behind you as a salesperson. Someone buys into you. They love talking to you. They love everything you said. But the brand equity isn't that great. So they visit the website or they meet, you know, John and Paul and Susie and like they're different from you and like it just it, the the brand itself has to be consistent and there needs to be equity built behind it to support sales teams. It's so incredibly important and we'll go into marketing deeper today obviously too, but brand is something that you can do to enable your sales teams. And talk to your sales teams about this as well when you're doing those checkpoints. And, and understand too, are you getting any feedback on our brand? How, how did someone hear about us? What did this look like? What do you think? Sometimes the best ideas will come from your upfront sales team. And again, if you're the salesperson, they're gonna come from you. But you know what's working and what's not working out there and you've gotta be building up that brand presence to make sure that the brand is bigger than just you. You should be a huge part of the brand, your team is an extension of your brand, but the brand itself has to be big and almost sometimes bigger than you are, right? So you need to be growing into your brand as you go. Ongoing training. Who provides ongoing training? Raise your hand if you provide ongoing training for your team, for your sales team. Not just your engineers? Okay, cool, awesome. Everybody else? Okay, so ongoing training. So this goes back to that knowledge piece, enabling your sales team to be knowledgeable. So making sure that they feel like when they came in, that wasn't the most knowledge they're ever gonna have, mixed with some of the on-the-job you know, learnings that you're investing in them and you're continuing to train. So there's so many places that you can go to get ongoing training for sales. You know, LinkedIn Learning, there's so many. Um, we have one that that many of you have seen. We call this For You to Grow University, so For You to Grow You. It has a ton of training in here. It's extremely affordable. This is something that we, we built out almost accidentally because we create so much content and we do trainings every single month that we wanna make sure the type of knowledge that we know is needed in the space is affordable, particularly for those where this is the, the one thing that you can get for your, your company. So you're more than welcome to check this out. Has anything from sales-based training, operational training, sales, marketing, um, product, finance, the list goes on. But ongoing training is so important for your sales team. I talked a little about this a moment ago. So these rules are different. I shared marketing's role is to tee up the lead. Marketing's role is to create that awareness, to drudge up the interest. That's marketing's role, right? Marketing goes out and creates just a tornado of awareness, gets people talking, gets people buzzing. You've got things out there about you. It's gaining that interest. Those that want to raise their hand and those that are really, really ready will raise their hand and reach out. The others are gonna sit around and continue to feel the tornado until they're ready, right? Sometimes those ones that are even getting touch, 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 in our space it takes upwards of 25 to 27 touches in B2B before someone's ready to even make a move. That's a lot of touches. So that's marketing's job. Marketing's job is to be out there creating that awareness, making your business known so that those that are ready can raise their hand and get in touch, those that aren't can be reached out to for outbound marketing potentially, and those that are not ready yet might be ready in the future, and that's why we call it nurture, right? You're nurturing that relationship. And there are so many ways to do this. I'll talk about a bunch of them today, but so many ways to create digital relationships and create awareness for your business out there in, you know, on the World Wide Web as well as right in front of someone in person. So that's marketing's job. Sales team's job is to close the business. When these get confused, it's almost like asking you know, your salesperson to be your engineer, your engineer to be your salesperson. It, they're different crafts. And when one's not doing their job, right, if you didn't have an engineer and your salesperson sold something, they would have to try to go figure it out, right? They're not gonna be the best at it and nor would you want them to do that for you. But that's the same thing when it comes to sales and marketing. So if you don't have a good lead generation machine, your sales team's gotta figure it out because they've got that quota still sitting on their back that we talked about. So making sure that you have a separation of roles and that you are genuinely fulfilling these for your team will make your sales team happy and obviously you happy as a business owner as well because you're generating the revenue that you intended to when you set out this year or next or you know, as you're planning. So these are 
the six things that I want you to focus on when it comes to supporting your team and when it comes to making sure that you're going to get the sales closed deals, the revenue that you're looking for. And, and if you do these six or even a portion of these six, you should be closer and closer and closer to hitting the goals that you have. Any thoughts, questions? No? Here's my LinkedIn, so feel free to connect with me. I know I'll be around, obviously, all day long. We're going to take a quick break, everyone, so you can stretch, meet some of your new friends. I'll quiz you later on how many everyone knows. Maybe there's a prize involved. I don't know. Um, but I want you to meet and greet with everybody and, and you know, warm up to, to meeting. So we'll meet back here in 10 minutes. It's 10-minute break? Yeah, like 10, 15-minute break. We'll grab you, though.